Hello everyone and welcome to my corner of the world. Today I have an elegant card, Christmas card to share with you. This is this is what we're going to be doing in in this video and it features a set of dies called <clears throat> the fancy frame dies and it's a pack of two and they uh, cut as you can see this fancy effect on uh, through through paper now there's, there's a second one here and you can see its leaves and I will share the card uh, an example of a card I made with that uh, at the end of this video so you can see how it looks but both dies work exactly the same way I'm also featuring this this delicious brush stroke designer series or specialty paper and when you look at it it has like um it reminds me of like a taffeta it's got a really beautiful sheen to it you get three sheets in a packet 12 by 12 um and there's knight of navy here we have soft succulent and there's also a piece another color which is is blushing bride and it really is beautiful so we're going to use the uh, adhesive sheet um, because we're going to be cutting some really fine detail here I found it easier to use the adhesive sheet rather than to try and add glue whether it be um, your stamping seal or liquid glue or anything like that um, that the adhesive sheet would would be better so I have a, a piece here now all the dimensions for this uh, card the supplies and all the measurements are on my blog and if you just look below this video there'll be a link to that and it'll take you straight to that blog post so I have used this um, double, uh, this adhesive sheet on quite a few projects that I have videoed and basically it's a very very thin sheet of adhesive and it comes in a packet um, of uh, the size is 6 by 12 and when you look at it closely you'll see that it is actually divided into like three strips on the sheet so I've cut my piece here to fit my piece of of, of, of specialty paper but I am um, it means I have to just just uh, put each piece on separately so I'm just pulling back my backing sheet like that and just sort of lining it up so that it butts up with the um, piece below and swish, swish it like that now I did try my very best to cut it exactly the same size but it's the same with all of these things oftentimes you do find that it's it's a hair too big and I need to remove the additional adhesive um, and that will become clear in a few minutes what I why I need to do that and just gently trimming that off and I think I got it pretty much lined up other than this little piece here. And that actually, that's the bit I started on. So maybe that's why it wasn't quite so successful. Now I'm going to get my little, my mini cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to be cutting this um, out and I'm going to be centering it on my i'm going to be centering my die on this piece of paper now i've got my number one base plate here and i've got one number two clear plate which i'm going to pop position on top and then i'm going to pop my piece down here like that and then i'm going to put my die and just see i've got a tiny little bit left in there now as i said i want to center this because i'm going to be using the outside piece of this 
as an additional frame for my card. And so it doesn't move, I am going to put washi tape. This is just some old washi tape um, that I have in my stash. And I'm going to just stick it down. And I'll show you how I what how I've positioned it in a second. And just to make absolutely sure this little devil doesn't move, I'm just adding some extra tape. So we've got as much as I can. I've got nice even borders, least ways I hope I have. And I'm going to put a number two plate on the top and just give it a little shove until it bites. And then I'm just gently going to crank it through. Now, I'm not going to rush it. I need as much pressure as I possibly can get on those cutting blades at the bottom of the die because I need it to cut through that paper. And if you go ever so fast, it doesn't give it time to put pressure down. And we'll see in a minute how successfully my slow cranking has been. There we go. All right, we'll move that one out the way and see what we've got left. Keep my keep your fingers crossed for me that it didn't move. I think we're good. And we're going to check on the back. I think we got a good cut. Now this piece is spare but it's it's a nice big piece and it's got adhesive on so i'm thinking i might do something with that at some point all right so gently remove the tape so you don't damage any of the paper and i would recommend that you that you always crank slowly especially when you're dealing with highly detailed pieces so there's there's my one piece that's my frame i want to keep that and now i've got this and i found that if i tap it sharply excuse the noise it loosens it and it gets rid of a lot of the pieces and then i can just gently flick out most of the others so that i've only got a little bit left now i could use my my brush um but having said that, sometimes if you have a really delicate paper, the brush might just damage the surface. That's very true if you're using gold foil. And I really don't want to um, chance it with this paper because it is so beautiful. So when I was doing my sample, I flicked this and it, it came out like a dream i think the little bit of adhesive that's holding it down as is, is on the back is probably just holding it in because these pieces are coming off really really quickly when i give them a nudge all righty now then i am not going to fuss and bother too much about that just now because i think when i go to take the backing off of this Oh, this has got all caught around the little curly cues. Come on, out you come. Um, when I go to take the backing off shortly, I think a lot of this will actually come out as well. Okay. So we're going to pop those bits aside. I'm just going to get rid of all these little bits. And move on to the next bit. Now, for my the rest of my front, I'm using the shimmery white cardstock. I don't know if you can see, it actually has a little glitter in it, and it's really very, very pretty. And I'm using my Stamparatus because I need it to be in the, in, in the centre, otherwise it's going to look a bit odd. So just put my little magnets down and these are strong. You can see I'm lose, using my tool here to just 
ease it up a little bit but they really do keep that card in the right place so my ink is knight of navy uh, because i'm using knight of navy cardstock and just gently add a little ink there and then just press now i do have videos explaining how to use the stamparatus and um you can go onto my uh, youtube channel and find those now i've just had a look and my i haven't quite got a really good impression there so that's the beauty with the stamparatus i can go back and i can re-ink because i've not touched anything in and moved or any card or anything like that now while i've got my ink out i'm going to be stamping my inside piece so my inside piece is the same shimmery cardstock, shimmery white. And I'm just going to stamp my greeting, another greeting. So I've got Merry Christmas on the outside and Happy New Year. And I'm going to do my envelope. I like to have a little decoration on my envelopes as they go into the mailbox. All right, so we've got those pieces together. Now I'm going to introduce you to another product that's in the um, Christmas catalogue, well, the holiday catalogue, which is the July to December 2022. And this is the the Trio Punch. Uh, and it, it's got sort of two corner decorations here and a ribbon punch there. Now, I want to just basically show you that this piece this is the corner we're going to use here now this is not symmetric so if you want your um, corners to look the same uh, on all four corners you you have to do the following now you have to commit to putting your cardstock in one way now you could put it in that way to start or this way to start but whichever way you choose, you have to do it the same way um, on all four corners. So you're going to punch in the middle. And here I have got a curvy bit here and then a little sticky out bit and then more of a corner here. Now, in order to get a matching pair this side, I have got to flip it like that. And I've got to put it in the same way as I just explained. And can you see, I've now got a corner, a roundy corner here and a roundy corner down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this. Now, let me get it right. So I need to have it another that. Right. <laughs> I need to put it in right way up at the same angle. And now I've still got my roundy corner, my roundy corner here. To do my last corner, I have to flip it and press. And you can see that now I have my round corners at the top and the, the sort of this scoopy bit here on the sides. Hope that makes sense. Just got to remember to put it in the same side each time. And I'm just going to use a little of my adhesive to get that in my card. Okay, there's there's our there's our inside done. And now we can focus on getting the front part done. Now, I'm going to be uh, sticking the square frame down onto my stamped piece. And remember, we had three pieces, didn't we, here? So I'm going to be taking off 
the first piece now and so you can see I'm going to be centering it on here so that I've got my borders all the way round. Now I know that my uh, greeting is in the right place and I'm just working out how I can do this without getting my head in the shot. So, and I also don't want to get this distorted, do I? Right, it's a bit nerve wracking. Right, now that's part of the reason I didn't take all the adhesive off because I don't want to be wrangling a boatload of adhesive. Okay, so now that's in the right place. I can now flip that back and I can take off the other pieces of backing sheet. Of course, it doesn't want to come off. There we go. And here. Just get my tool in there and hook it up. There we go. And then I'm just going to layer this down. And I'm trying very hard not to distort the frame. So I'm just putting a little bit of tension on it here. And then finally, this last piece comes off. And again, I'm just going to make sure that I don't stretch it or put it out of shape and then I'm just going to flip over and I'm just going to press that firmly on the back side because I don't want my bone folder to mark my pretty piece of paper here. Now that we've done that piece we're going to attach our fancy piece, our fancy schmancy piece here and i'm going to start by removing oh sorry <laughs> i'm going to start by removing one side and laying it down i'm standing up here so i can't so i i don't get my head in the in the shot and i'm lining up my edges inside that little aperture now we know this piece this fancy piece came out of there so it's going to fit in okay now i need to press down firmly to make sure that the adhesive on all those little curly bits is firmly attached and then we're going to take the adhesive off of the uh, other pieces So just gently take it back on these both these sides. There we go. And again, like I did before, I'm just going to gently ease this down so that it fits in the little aperture that we've got there. Now, it did just go through my mind that it might have been easier to put this bit down first and then this piece. Um, but there you go. You always, um, you always come up with a, a, another idea when you're halfway through one, one job. As you can see, those pieces that wouldn't come out a few moments ago have actually all come out when I've taken the backing off. 
So we're just going to smooth that back down into that little gap. There we are. And there's a little bit of stuff that's just in there. Now it does take a little bit of time, but don't you think it's worth it? Because this is such a pretty, pretty card. Very, very elegant. I, I love it. And I think it would look really good in that um, soft succulent as well. You could you could do that. So again, I'm smoothing on the back because I don't want to damage any of my beautiful paper. And I'm just going to double check to make sure that those bits are nicely and firmly stuck down. There we go. What do you think? I, I think it makes a jolly pretty and extremely elegant card. Now I'm going to attach it to my card base uh, and although we've got some uh, gleam here there's not enough sparkle for me so I am going to get some of this lovely sparkly organ organza ribbon it's uh, well white uh, with with sparkles it's so it's right up my street and i'm going to attach that with a couple of glue dots so we're going to put one on each end I'm just going to line up and you can put it to the right or the left. But now the reason I like this particular ribbon is because it's see through. You don't lose all that pretty design that we've just worked so hard for. Let's put a little bit of pressure on there just to hold that in place. Then in with our Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm using the black ones here. Uh, because basically I'm, I'm using the dark cardstock uh, for my for my card base. Um, it's a, and I could have used white because I'm using a white card base as um, a piece of card as well. Okay, so we're gonna pop that there, press firmly, and then I'm gonna do my faux knot. So some of you may have seen me do this before. Rather than wind um, ribbon around the card and then tying it in a knot, you never get that knot tied tight enough, do you? Never. However hard I try, I can never get that knot tied. So by putting the ribbon on the back of the, the, the card layers um, and then just tying a piece around like this. It looks as though you've tied it all round, but you haven't. And, and the thing I like about that is that, first of all, it reduces bulk. So if you're like me and you send a lot of cards overseas, you need to reduce however much it weighs. And so by doing that, it, it reduces that bulk and it, it saves on your ribbon. Why put ribbon on the back where it can't be seen? So there we have a really elegant card. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this. I promised I would share an alternate card using the other die, uh, which I have done here. And all I did with this one is I got this piece of pear pizzazz cardstock and I cut it out from that piece of cardstock and then I attached it down to a piece of white and if you were to look on the back of this piece of cardstock you would see that it's got a hole where I took this piece out um, so again it cuts down on bulk and it also um, cuts down um, on on weight so I really do hope you've enjoyed me introducing these products to you. 
the dies we've used today are the fancy frame dies and i've also showed this shared this best trio punch and explained how to get the best results out of it it's been my pleasure to 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 be with you today if you have any comments please go ahead and put them below the video if you've enjoyed it give me a thumbs up and if you don't already subscribe perhaps you'll hit that button and then you will get notified every time i publish a video as well as my video uh, youtube lives well thank you for joining me today bye bye for now